Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Palin's Books. I'm Elizabeth. And I've already done my mid-year freakout tag for this year, 2021. But I'd like to also do kind of a goals check-in and just give you an update on where I am with some of my reading goals and reading projects. Uh, Amber from Ambicrafts Reads always teases me about how many reading projects I have going at any one time. And I kind of lose count, I think. But uh, some of them I constantly concentrate on more than others at certain years. And this year is no exception. I have a few that I've been working towards for several years. And then some that I just came up with this year as a way to knock off some books off of my TBR. And those I'm focusing on real heavy this year. Most of them have to do with series. And I just thought it'd be fun to go back through my reading goals and reading projects that I said I was going to do this year and just see where I am with it. So I have a little book here. I usually use old composition books for my reading journals. Nothing fancy. Over the years, my kids buy these for school and then invariably don't need all of the ones that they buy, or maybe there's one or two pages that are used. And so I tear those pages out and then I just make use of the old notebooks. So this is what I have this year. But I did just find a book, which is also a hand-me-down from my daughter, Katie. She went through a mustache phase several years ago and this was in some of the stuff she was getting rid of and it's a journal too I haven't written anything in it yet and I'll tell you what I'm going to use it for soon but this has 35 lines per page whereas my composition books have about 25 lines per page and this is funny I must ask you a question but I'll shave it for later <laughs> anyway I'm not even sure how many pages this has but I like this and I am going to use this as a series book. I think it was Sarah from the um, uh, Sarah's Nightstand. Yeah, Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand has a book where she just has a page for every series that she's reading where she lists all the books and then checks off each book as she's read it. I would like to do something like that uh, maybe in this book. I have started a Google Doc with just all my series that I'm working on and finished series and things like that, but I I think I would like to just put all the series that I've read ever and that I plan to read or that I'm in the middle of and just have it all in one book. So that is a project for sometime in the future. But anyway, let me just kind of go through some of my projects and then I will focus mainly on the projects that have to do with series and show you the books that I have read for those projects. So one project that I've been doing for several years is reading all of the Newbery books. And I think I m made better progress last year than this year. So far, I counted and I thought I had read more than this, but I have only read two Newbery winners this year. I think there may have been another one or two, but I think those were last year. And I have also read two other books leading up to one of those because they were books in a series. And that's kind of why I got sort of stalled because I really wanted to finish The Chronicles of Perdane and the Newbery winner is book five. So I had started it last year and then I had to read uh, this year books three and four and then I read book five which is the Newbery winner and then another standalone and then I did read at least one Newbery honor book this year but that is all I have read so far this year and I'm really trying to kick it up a notch for the second half of the year because I had said I wanted to try to read all the rest of the Newbery winners this year that I had not read and I still have about 30 to go. I have already finished one in July and I will be doing a video pretty soon because now I finished all the Newbery winners of the 1960s so I'll have that video coming soon but I really hope to keep keep on checking them off uh, as uh, as the next few months go by. So then I have um well, I, I, I'm trying, I have these written in the wrong order. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And so I'm trying to skip around and then go back and focus on the series stuff at the end. Okay, the next thing on the list is Sunshine State Books. Well, I've only read one so far this year because I finished all of last school year books, I think, before the year started. So I didn't have anything to read until they were announced in April. And then I didn't get started with any of them until actually this month in July. So really, I read no Sunshine State books from 
January to June. Now, I don't know why that was hard for me to get out, but anyway, uh, I will be reading some, though, in the second half of the year. Probably not all of them this year. I, I don't think I'm going to read them all, but we'll see. Uh, then I have readathons. So each month I sort of have a different focus based on what readathons there are. Most of the ones that I host are in the early part of the year. So uh, in January, uh, we got to um, we got to have Ribsat again, read your bookshelf a thon. And I got to be a, a host for that. Now, uh, that was created by Miranda from, uh, used to be Books with Miranda, now. Um, no, Books 101, and now she's the life of Miranda. And uh, she just picked at random some people who expressed interest in being a host. So I got to host Rib co-host Ribsat in January. And then in February, I hosted for the second year in a row the Little House Readathon. And then I participated in the Historathon. And I feel like there was something else. But uh, anyway, that was a lot of fun. Then, of course, March is March Mystery Madness. And I also try to dabble a little bit in uh, middle grade March, even though I usually focus more on middle grade in May, for middle grade May, and then I did hashtag book a day in May. But back to April, um, for one week, or 10 days it was this year, for April, I hosted with Sarah the Amish in April readathon. So the whole first half of the year is really just full of readathons for me. And then in June, I participated in several. There was the Pastoral June readathon, the Golden Girls readathon, and the Category Romance readathon. So readathons have been uh, a big part of my reading year year so far, and I'm going to try to not do quite as many readathons in the second half of the year. I will do nonfiction November, but um, uh, and I'm doing the Killing It With Cozies Summer Challenge and, and a couple of others that I'll low-key participate in, but um, the biggest ones for me for the year are done. We are going to do, I believe, I don't, I don't know if I've announced this yet, but uh, we have talked about doing a mid-year Mystery Madness readathon and doing a shorter version of March Mystery Madness in September, which is the halfway point um, from March to March. So be uh, on the lookout for those announcements coming uh sooner than we sooner than later really uh September will be here before we know it um then another another project that I had to add to my list after it was announced is the booktube spin I just have really really enjoyed the booktube spin I'm caught up with the uh, round one and round two I read my books for both of those rounds and then <laughs> Through no fault of my own, I ended up with four books for round three. Uh, one, because it was two spins, and two, because I had two different lists. So one from each list, or two from each list. And I will probably just do one a month of, um, of those, because the next one should be announced in late October. So we'll have November and December to read it, and that'll be round four. So I've got July, August, September, and October, and I've got four books. So one a month is my plan for that. And then um, I put on here, finish my stack must tree. I did finally update that, and it's somewhere over here. Where is it? I had it. Oh, my goodness. Now it's lost. <laughs> I um I don't have very, mit very many books left on my stack must tree. Hang on. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. So this was a project I started in uh, October of 2019. And basically it was a Stack the Series challenge. And it was the series that I wanted to focus on for October, November, and December of 2019. I got a lot done. And then in 2020, I did a few more. But then I had misplaced my little uh, green papers, which I had already pre-cut to fit all of the sections. So I have been cleaning in here. You guys don't even know. Oh, it is so much cleaner. I've been filing papers. I still have a lot to do, but uh, I'm still not ready to show you the rest of this room yet. But I did finally unearth the uh, the little papers that uh, I had pre-cut. So now I have added in everything that I've read up to this point, and I'm almost done with the Stackmas tree. Finally, I've got one more. Um, this is a Christmas book from the Home to Heather Creek series. It's book. Five, I believe. I can't see into that one. And then three books from the Cape Light series. One of these is book four, which is not a Christmas book, and I need to get it read before the Christmas season starts. And then books five and six are both Christmas books. And then I will have completed my Stackmas tree. So yay, I'm excited about that. <laughs> As SpongeBob would say, two years later. 
<laughs> but anyway, uh, and then I'll just take a picture of this and this can go in the garbage because it has been floating around my house for way too long and uh, I will be glad to get it out of my way. Okay, then I also have on here TBR jar. I have two TBR jars. One is for nonfiction and one is for fiction. And uh, and a dog down here making noise. Sorry about that. Uh, but my, uh, my thought process behind creating those TBR jars was to get to some books that I thought I could probably get rid of after I gave them a second look. And I have been able to get rid of several of them. And uh, I've enjoyed a lot of the ones I've read. I've had some good surprises. And this round has taken me a little bit longer to do because I ended up drawing more out of the last batch than I normally did. And I thought I was, uh, I thought I had started the last, uh, the last one, but I was just looking at my stack and realized there is one more nonfiction book that I have not read. But I finished one of my fiction books today, yay, and uh, and I have one more that I thought was nonfiction that turned out to be fiction, and I'm I have it ongoing right now. It's actually in my bathroom. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. And it's my book. It's not a library book, so it's okay, right? Uh, and then I've got one more um, that's a parenting book, and I need to read that, and then I'll be able to do um, another draw of my TBR jar. So then book club. Book club is definitely an ongoing project for me, and I have been doing pretty good with book club. I had hoped that by this time I would have gotten most of the books read for the second half of the year. I have read everything for both my literary book club and my mystery book club. Both of those meet at the library. So I have read all six from each of the um, each of the book clubs uh, up through June. And then I have read one of the six books for the second half of the year of the literary book club. And I've read three of the books for my mystery book club for the second half of the year. So I've got five left to read for one book club. And uh, well, actually, no, um, then uh, that doesn't count July. So for July, I have read both of the books for July. So I only have um, four left for um, the Literary Book Club and three left. I don't know. I mix myself up. I don't have that much left to read, so that's good. I'm 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 still ahead. I don't have either of them read yet for August. I have started one though in my car. Um, what is next? So then, um, I also have on my list buddy reads and read alongs. That's just to remind me that when I'm setting up my TBR for the month, you know, are there any buddy reads I want to do or any read alongs and, and things like that. So the big three projects that I started for this year, um, Two of them really have to do with series. One of them is my Get Serious About Series Challenge or hashtag Serious About Series. I've got threads on my Goodreads group for that. And I think there may be a channel for it on the Killing It With Cozy's uh, Discord group because that group has just taken this um, challenge by storm and have really just been going like gangbusters. And uh, uh, how many cliches can I say? Uh, they have really been doing great on this challenge. And um, there is a place, though, if you still want to jump in and get serious about some series, there is uh, threads on my Goodreads group, which is Lizzie face comfy corner and I will put that down below and so I want to read you my um my wrap up for the first six months of the year uh, I'll just read you from that because that's where I've got everything summarized uh basically on my goodreads group there is a place where you can uh, share your progress and share your series that you finished or that you've made progress in each month and then for um for the um uh, end of June, I did a separate one for a mid-year check-in. So there's one thread where you can put just what you read in June. And then if you want to total everything up, you can. And so for me, um, for my totals, I, well, actually, before I get to that, let me tell you my other two projects. One was an author binge project where I picked uh, one or two authors each month that I wanted to binge read. Started out, I wanted to do four books per author. Then it kind of went to three. And I did really good. Uh, well, January, I didn't really do it. But um, for February, March, April, and May, I did great. And June. Uh, now for July, I, I sort of put that aside because I just had several other things I wanted to catch up with. So uh, I will pick back up, I think, for that project in the month, starting back in the month of August. 
So then the other project is kind of related to the Get Serious About series, and it is 12 middle grade or YA trilogies that I had started previous to this year and still wanted to read the other two to complete the trilogies. I'm not doing quite as good on that as I am the other uh, Serious About series list, but um, I'm doing okay. I have finished three trilogies and uh, and read one book in one more. So ideally at this point I would have finished six trilogies but and I've finished three and a half you know, I'll, I'll take what I can get at this point. I'm just happy about that. So for my main uh, series about series challenge, what I said the challenge would be is to read 21 of something in relation to the series that you are wanting to read. For me, I picked the 21 series that I was most likely to finish, mainly the ones that I was close to finishing, that I was interested in finishing. It could be anywhere from one to five books, you know, in any series. It could be a series that is still being written, and maybe you just want to catch up with this, uh, you know, with where that series is right now, or it's a series that has already been completed by the author and you want to finish it. So I picked actually 22 series because I couldn't quite narrow it down, but I have now figured out which one of those that I am not going to finish this year because uh, my plan that I had mapped out, um, I was, I was all set to read two more books and finish the series, and then the author added one more. And so I'm just going to save that one uh, till next year. So anyway, I'll show them all to you. I have a, a visual from almost all of the 22 series that I set out to read, and, as well as a visual from all 12 of the trilogies that I set out to read. So I want to just share with you where I am in each of those trilogies so or, and series. So I have finished now. This is as of the end of June, um, the questions that I ask in my Goodreads group, how many series have you completed so far in 2021? So of my list of 22 series or 21 series, I have completed 11 of those series, those specific ones. And I also completed one other series that I had already started that um, was not on my list of 21. And then I finished three of the 12 middle grade YA trilogies that I set a goal, a goal to finish. And then I started and finished another four series that were not on my list. Um, I, I guess they were on my TBR. But uh, in this first six months of the year, I started and finished them. So um, they were kind of just extra, you know. And then the next question was, how many books did you read this year in the series that you completed? So of the 21 series that I set out to finish, I have read 25 books from all 21 of those series. So not only have I finished a few series, I've made progress in three other series. And now this does not count the trilogies. This is just the 21 series. Um, and then... Let's see, also six books and, oh, okay, so 25 books from the list of 21 series. And then from the list of 12 trilogies, I've read six books plus one novella. And those are from the, um, from the trilogies. And then I finished 19 books in the other series that I finished. So then, uh, number three, how many other ongoing series did you make progress in that you haven't finished yet? And that a total is nine. I have made progress in nine other series that I have ongoing um, that were already started prior to this year. And then uh, question number four, how many books did you read in the series that you made progress in? And the answer to that is 19, because I already actually mentioned that uh, in another question. Number five, how many new series did you start in the last six months? <laughs> so I started 20, and those are not including the four that I started and finished finished. So <laughs> I know the idea was to finish series and get them off my list. And I, so I finished 11, but I've started 20. There's just no end to it. And, um, what is your total number of series books that you've read so far in 2021? And I have read 102 books in series that, uh, that includes the series that I started that I think I will continue. There are a couple in there that I uh, maybe had to read for book club or something that I'm not planning to continue on with the series. And so uh, I don't think I counted all of those, but 102 books that are part of series that, um, that I am reading. And then my six-month summary of everything, I finished 183 books for um, from January 
to June. The shortest book was three pages. <laughs> it was a little bonus story from the Maze Runner series. And uh, then my longest print book was 1,192 pages because I read the Bible in 90 days. And then my longest audiobook, I don't know why I didn't write the hours. Uh, in pages, it was 640 pages, and I'm not sure how many hours that would be, um, but that was my longest audiobook for the first six months. So anyway, um, I will come back in just a minute and show you the actual series and the books that I have finished and what I still have left to go. Okay, I think I will do this by genre. Of my 21 or 22 series that I set out as a goal to finish this year, I had three series that are middle grade, and I have finished two of those, and one of them I have not finished yet. So let me show you what those are. The very first month of the year in January, I finished The Penderwicks by reading The Penderwicks at Last. This was a buddy read with Krista from Books and Jams. We both enjoyed it. I think I probably uh, loved it a little bit more than she did uh, because uh, it, we both agreed, though, that there, we were both a little bit let down at the end, but uh, I just really enjoyed this whole series. I just love, love, loved it, and uh, so idyllic and wonderful. And for that reason, I've seen it criticized because I've heard and read people's reviews that say it's just too good. You know, it's too, too good to be real realistic. But uh, anyway, I just really enjoyed it. And despite the fact that there was a little bit of a letdown at the end of this one, uh, still a very good series. And I was glad that I finished it. And then I also read the uh, books three, four, and five in the Chronicles of Prydain, finishing up just in June with The High King, which is a Newbery winner from the 1960s. So I'll be talking a little bit about this again when I do my Newbery winner video of the 1960s. And this is just a really sweet, fun, middle grade, um, not middle grade, mid well, it is middle grade, but a medieval fantasy story. The friendships in here are just so wonderful. And I just grew to love these characters and thought it was a fantastic series. So I would highly recommend if you are reading all the Newbery winners, don't skip the earlier part of the series. Read the whole series. It is definitely worth it. And then I decided to save for maybe October because people usually read darker stuff then. The last book in the Last Survivor series by Susan Beth Pfeffer. Book four is The Shade of the Moon. And uh, I have read the other three books. The very first book in the series is Life as We Knew It. And I've actually read this one a couple of times. And finally, last year, I got uh, books two and three read. I just haven't read book four. So uh, even though my daughter says this last one is not worth reading. Uh, I am going to go ahead and finish it just for the sake of finishing and uh, check that one off my list. Okay, let's do Cozy Mysteries next. Uh, I have one, two, three, five, six, I think seven Cozy Mysteries and some of these are still being written and I will just catch up with um, the ones that... Um, you know, the ones that are still being written so that I am ready to continue with the series. That is my goal. And I, a couple of them I only have on ebook or audiobook, so I'm looking up a, a visual to show you. So one of the books is by Barbara Van Ketteraman, and I did an interview with her earlier in the year, and she writes the Jamie Quinn Mystery Series, and I read Malice in Miami, which is book, let's see, book six. And it, um, Jamie Quinn takes on big sugar in this story. So there's a teaspoon with sugar in the shape of a skull, if you can't make that out. Uh, kind of creepy. And uh, that was a good book. So uh, not my favorite of the series, but still, that's just been a fun series. Jamie Quinn is a reluctant lawyer in South Florida and um, just a real strong female character all around. And uh, I do really enjoy the series. Then I also completed the Spencer Funeral Home uh, Niagara Cozy Mystery Series by reading book four, which is First Call. And this is a series set in Niagara Falls, and it is set in a funeral home. And it has just been 
a, I think, a really great series. I did not know till I saw um, Janelle's uh, Too Fond of Books video about mysteries or books set in funeral homes. I didn't know there were so many books set in funeral homes or mortuaries. There are quite a lot. Uh, she didn't even mention this one, but uh, this is the only one I know about, and I just think it's great. I have also read the memoir by this author, Janice J. Richardson. She is a former funeral director, and she has a whole book about her becoming a funeral director and what that involved, and it was so interesting. I uh, just highly recommend it. So the, the next, let me get back to my, to my Google Doc so that I don't leave out any series. Um, where did it go? I'll get there. <laughs> okay. So then, um, the uh, another series that I was caught up with and all I needed to do was read the newest release is the Granny Reed Mysteries by G.A. McKevitt. The, um, this is the first book, Murder in Her Stocking. So if you are interested in this series, you'll want to start here. Great time to read this would be, you know, in the latter part of the year when it's Christmas season. Then the second book is set at Halloween. And then the third book... I don't even remember where, what time of year it is set in. You could probably read it anytime. It was called Murder at Mabel's Motel. And I think I read that for March Mystery Madness. Anyway, the uh, Granny Reed Mysteries is a spinoff of the Savannah Reed Mysteries. This is a prequel series because in this book, Savannah is the oldest grandchild of Granny Reed. And she is still a young girl who is dreaming and hoping of being in law enforcement someday, which she obviously does because she's got her own mystery series. Anyway, uh, this is a fun series. I have not read any of the Savannah Reed mysteries. I do have several on my shelf, but I don't have the first one or two, and I'm trying to find those, and I want to collect the series, and then I will read them. This series I haven't collected. I've just gotten them from audio, uh, gotten them from Hoopla on audio, and uh, I've been listening to them like that. So the next series on my list is the Writer's Apprentice series by Julia Buckley. I have here book four. This was sent to me by Berkeley when it first came out. And so that alerted me to the series. I went back then and listened to the first three books before moving on to book four. And since then, I have read book five and found out that there is a Christmas novella, which I'm saving for Christmas. So I would say, you know, that I finished 12 series, but I don't count it finished until I finish that novella. And uh, this one is book four. Or Death Waits in the Dark. Uh, I have enjoyed this series a lot. I think it's very good. There's a couple of little issues that I don't love about it, but for the most part, I think it's been a very compelling series, and I have really enjoyed it. And then the next series on my list that is a cozy mystery is... Um, find it here. The Hannah Swenson Baking Mysteries. This was one of my most anticipated reads for this year. This is the one I have not read. The Triple Chocolate Cheesecake Murder. If you want to start the series from the beginning, it's a big series. Uh, you don't necessarily have to read all of them in order, but I would say read the first one. And after about book five, then you could probably read books five to 15 in any order. But then after that, things start kind of changing and going wonky. <laughs> So I would say don't start the series past like book 15 because things, things, they are changing. Um, anyway, if you're a fan of the series, you know, we've talked about this with the Killing It with Cozy's group. Things are starting to get a little bit eye rolly, but I'm not alone in being in this group of people that have been reading this from the beginning and we're just going to keep reading them. As long as she's writing them, we're going to keep reading them, even if they've gotten a little bit elementary. Um, and I'm, I know I'm not alone. I've heard other people say this. Anyway, the, I, I'm not expecting a lot out of this. I just want to continue the series. I did really, really love the series, the earlier books, and I don't want to encourage you not to read them. I want to encourage you to read them. Just start and read the earlier books. They are really fun. If you don't like love triangles and you get really tired of love triangles really fast, then you might just want to read the first few and let it go at that. But anyway, this is the most recent one and I do want to read it this year. I'm hoping it'll turn up on audio on one of my library resources so that I can just listen to it on audio. Although I probably 
should read it in print because as good as the narrator is, I'm starting to get a little bit worn out with the narrator too. Um, I don't need to go into all that. <laughs> She's great. Um, but there's just things, just things. Uh, anyway, the other two are a series that I basically binge read at one point or another, and I want to just catch up with the newest ones. The Cat in the Stacks mysteries, in fact, I mentioned both of these in my Media Freakout tag. So if you saw that, then I don't need to go into a lot of detail. But uh, the Cat in the Stacks series, I binge read in, I think, 2018 or 2019. 2019, when my daughter was in the hospital having all of her brain surgeries. And later that year, a new one came out. And then last year, another one came out. And then this year, another one comes out. I think at the end of August. So... Probably in September, I will binge read all three of the ones that I haven't read and catch back up with this series. And then I think not till December does the newest Coffeehouse Mystery come out. I have read everything up till, um, I think it's book 19, and that's due out, like I said, in December. It's called Honey Roasted, and uh, then I will continue to stay caught up with the Coffeehouse Mysteries. So that, I think, is all of the cozy mysteries that... I um, that I put on my list that I wanted to read and I am caught up with one two three I've caught up with three of them I've made progress in a fourth and then I still have three more to go so not too bad considering it's the halfway point of the year all right so then let's look next at well, let me just lump everything else together they're all adult books. Some are romance. Some are Christian. Um, none of them are... Uh, most all of them are what I would consider women's fiction, except a couple of them. So I'll do those first. The ones that are not women's fiction. They're just general fiction or science fiction. Um, for science fiction, I just needed to read the newest book to finish this duology, Ready Player One, Ready Player Two. I really enjoyed Ready Player One, and Ready Player Two had a good bit of foul language, and I suspect that Ready Player One had a good bit of foul language, too. I just kind of forgot. Um, anyway, this was okay. I, I didn't hate it. Uh, I didn't love it quite as much as the first one, but, uh, it, but it, it was okay. I, uh, you know, um, I, guess, I think I rated it a three. And it's by Ernest Cline. Um, lots of pop culture references and everything. So, um, you know, it was fun. And then the other one I am actually reading right now. This is historical fiction with a little bit of a creep factor, but really more of just a mystery. Mysterious. That's really what it is. This is The Labyrinth of the Spirits by Carlos Ruiz Efon. I'm buddy reading this with my friend Elizabeth Tyree. This is book four in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books. Um, if you... Um, have not heard of this one, you may have heard of this one, The Shadow of the Wind. This is book one, and we have been buddy reading this whole series over the years, and uh, we are, um, we're really enjoying this. We are about half done at this point. I don't have a bookmark in here. We're listening to it on audio. I misspoke the other day. I said we're both listening on script. She's got it on Audible. I'm listening on script, but I think she's got the ebook on script too, and I've got the physical copy. So we're getting it done one way or the other, and we're just reading a little bit every day. And, uh, and then chatting about it on Boxer. So that's been a lot of fun to read that with her. And then most everything else would probably be considered um, women's fiction or, you know, of interest to women. Um, one of them is more just, like, humorous. I got this in under the, under the radar <laughs> right at the end of June. Book six in the um, Harmony series by Philip Gully. This one was not my favorite. It was not nearly as fun as some of the other books in the series. Uh, I may do a series review of this. I may go ahead and read the three books in the Hope series first and then just kind of do a all-encompassing video and talk about Philip Gully's books. I don't know. I have a few nonfiction books of his or some story books. Um, short story books. I've read one of his nonfiction that I didn't love, and uh, I've got a couple others. So, I don't know. At some point, you'll hear more about Philip Gully's books from me. But anyway, I am done now with the Harmony series, and uh, overall, I enjoyed the series, but um, I don't know. It, you have to be able to laugh at yourself, and, uh, and there's definitely some humor in it, so I'll just leave it at that. Then... Um, Let's do the 
Uh, now, I don't consider this Christian fiction. It is about um, a Quaker minister and a Quaker church, but it doesn't really fit into the parameters of what I consider Christian fiction. Uh, it's clean, but um, but there, there's a difference, really, in um, in the two. So that really, I just read for the humor. Um but let's look at the Christian fiction. Let's start with the Dearest Dorothy, Welcome to Partonville series. This is really low-key Christian fiction. It is um, very, uh, very light, um, but the underlying faith of Dearest Dorothy is definitely evidenced. Uh, I read the first book in December. So um, it's a five book series. I don't own one of them. So I'm not quite done with uh, this series yet. For uh, in January, I listened to book two, Dearest Dorothy, Slow Down, You're Wearing Us Out. And then book three, Help, I've Lost Myself. And um, then in um, June for the Golden Girls Readathon, I listened to book four because I needed a book that featured a, an older character. So I listened to Who Would Have Ever Thought. And then there, uh, there's a Christmas book at book five, and I don't have that one. I think it's called Mary Everything, uh, M-E-R-R-Y. And then book six, Dear Dorothy, If Not Now, When? So at some point, um, even if I wait and do the Christmas book at Christmas, then I'll go ahead and finish this up in December as well so that I can say that I finished that series by the end of the year. And then I also finished a series I've been reading for a while. It is the Brides of the West series by Lori Copeland. And even though I did attempt to do a, a bit of a binge read in June for Lori Copeland, I didn't. I only got one done in June. But earlier in the year, I had finished the Brides of the West. So I've got all six stories in these two bind-ups. And I don't even remember how long ago I started these. The first three are Faith, June, and Hope. And then the... Um, Books four, five, and six are Glory, Ruth, and Patience. So I think right at the end of February, I uh, yeah, I th yeah, I think right at the end of February, I listened to Ruth, and then right at the beginning of March, before I got started with my March books, unless it was the end of January into February, I don't know. Y'all don't care. Uh, I. I finished I finished two of these this year. Ruth and Patience. One was right at the end of one month and then I did the uh the next the last one right at the beginning of the next month. Whatever month that was. Anyway, um this has been a fantastic series. I really really enjoyed all of these. They are sort of mail order brides. At least these first 3 set out to be mail order brides. Everything didn't always work out like it you know, like the plan was, but it all worked out according to God's plan. And, uh, these were just wonderful Christian fiction, romance books that I did thoroughly enjoy. And then I also am almost done with uh, a love inspired suspense series. It started with Mission to Protect by Terry Reed. This is a 12, no, not 12, nine book series uh, that, um, these were published in 2018. I first learned about these from Catherine, from Jane Catherine on Books. She did a read-along of the first two books during March Mystery Madness. And uh, I really enjoyed that first one. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and finish the series. So uh, they turned up on Hoopla on audio. So I was so excited about that that I was able to listen to most of them. But then this very last one, sorry, a truck with, with a loud stereo and a and some kind of glare just went by. Anyway, it blinded me for a second. Um, I found this at a used bookstore not too long ago. And uh, this is the only one not on audio on Hoopla. And it is a uh, two-story bind-up that are Christmas-themed. Military Canine Unit Christmas by Valerie Hansen and Laura Scott. So I plan to read this one at, in December or November, maybe. I don't know. I may go ahead and get started on it in November. And... Um, and finish up the series this year. I have found that I have several saved for December, so I, like I said, I'll probably have to go ahead and start some of those in November in order to make sure that I get them done. 
I have a duology that uh, uh, both books were sent to me by the publisher, and I just finished the second one in the month of June. The series is the Haven Maker series by Robin Jones Gunn. The first book is Becoming Us. Really thoroughly enjoyed it, and so I was excited to get the second one, Being Known. Uh, both of these books are, uh, this series is kind of a spinoff of the Christy Miller series, which is a YA series that Robin Jones Gunn wrote several years ago. Now Christy and Todd are all grown up and married and these stories are about their friend group and just very good I thoroughly enjoyed both of these books a lot and then for Amish in April I finished up a series that I had started last year um, last year I read The Fiddler by Beverly Lewis and also the second book in the series, which I can't remember now the title of it. And so this year I went ahead and got through the, uh, the last three. So I don't own one of them, but I did read book three, The Guardian. And then, um, I'm trying to think what was the title of the fourth one. I don't remember. Uh, then the fifth one is The Last Bride. So this is a five book series and I have listened to all five of these, um, on... I guess it was on Hoopla, and uh, so I got three of these done this year and really enjoyed all of them. Okay, let's see what I have left now. I think that is all of the Christian fiction, and um, let me move on into... Hmm, I've made a lot of progress with the Miss Julia series. I think I have read four, four or five books by uh, Ann B. Ross this year. I've only, I only own two of them here. Uh, Miss Julia Weathers a Storm and Miss Julia Takes the Wheel. I also read Miss Julia Knows a Thing or Two and Miss Julia Raises the Roof. And then the newest one came out in April. It is Miss Julia Happily Ever After. I have this checked out from the library. I may still not get to it this month, but uh, I saw it there on the bookmobile and decided to go ahead and grab it. And uh, that way I have it to show you. So, um, I have made really good progress, but I still have one more to finish with the Miss Julia series, and I hope to do that before the end of the year. And then, a couple more. Let's see, what have I not told you about yet? Um, this one was just kind of a catch-up. Uh, I read The Apple Orchard by Susan Wiggs a few years ago. I did a buddy read with Sarah and Chloe, and uh, didn't love it. And then... Last year, I guess, when the Lost and Found Bookshop uh, came out, I thought, oh, that looks good. I'll read that. And I didn't know it was connected with this. So um, it was book three in the Bella Vista Chronicles. So just recently, I went back and listened to book two, which I've shown you recently because I just read it last month. It was the Beekeeper's Ball. And the Beekeeper's Ball was actually a wedding, and they referred to it as the Beekeeper's Ball because everything they were serving had honey in it or some type of bee related thing and uh, that's why it was called the beekeepers ball so I did finish that now I don't know if there's going to be any more in that or not but I read book two so that now I'm caught up with that series and the I am almost done so then the only other one to make a total of 21 that I definitely plan to finish this year is the Dixie Trilogy by Lisa Patton uh, the first book is Whistling Dixie in a Nor'easter I listened to this one and the second book um can't think what the name of the second one is <laughs> I didn't bring everything in here because it would be too much. Anyway, I listened to both of these on Audible Plus and just really, really loved them. Meanwhile, I already owned this third book, Southern as a Second Language, so I want to read this one this year and um, and finish that trilogy. They um, These first two books were so good. There was just so many layers, so much that happened, and she told a fantastic story without any foul language. I love that. I just thought that was just great. And then the only other series I haven't mentioned is the other series that was on my list of 22, and it's the one that I am going to make some progress in this year, but I'm not going to finish it, and that is the Beach House series by Mary Alice Monroe. Uh, two years ago, we read the Beach House for a book club that I was in that's not meeting right now, and so I went ahead and read the second one, which I think was called Swimming Lessons, and I enjoyed that, and so then last year, I went ahead and read books three and four, and thinking, okay, this year, I'll read books five and six, and I'll be done. Well, now there's a book seven. 
seven. So I'm still going to read books five and six, but I won't be done with the series. I'm just going to go ahead and save book seven, because what if next year she writes book eight? I'll still have two to go for next year, so why rush? And uh, and so that's good. It, it helps. It, sometimes it's good to have a bonus selection. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room and a little bit of leeway. So those are the 21 slash 22 series that I am working to finish. And like I said, I have finished 25 books out of these 21 series so far this year. I'm not sure how many books I still have left to go, but uh, I think I'll be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm on track to uh, to finish them. I finished 11 of the 21 series, so definitely doing well and made progress in three others. So next I want to show you the trilogies that I am working to finish, and I will be back in just a second. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you are the 12 trilogies that I hope to finish this year. At this point, you know, I've only finished three and a half and I may not get all of these done, but it's fine. You know, it's always good to set goals and then whatever amount of progress you make is a good thing, even if I don't get them all done. So um, I want to just show you where I am with this project. So I finished... It took me a couple of months to get these done because I went ahead, even though I've read the first one of all of these, I reread the first Luck Uglies, I think in January. So then I think in February, I read the second one and maybe in March, I read the third one or something like that. I don't know. I stretched it out and uh, I did thoroughly enjoy them. I I did zoom through. Actually, you know what? I read the third one at the beginning of April when I was getting ready for my trip, and I really zoomed through that third one. So at some point, they're on Scribd, maybe even on Hoopla. I may go back and listen to that third one again because I realized after I was done that I was not paying very close attention. This is just kind of a adventure series, historical setting, um, kind of a medieval setting, really. Not... I don't know, I hesitate to say medieval, but that's probably about where it falls, um, for lack of a better of a better term. Uh, it's just kind of a fun adventure series and um, strong family ties and um, just a really good middle grade uh, fantasy trilogy. And then the next one is a historical trilogy, and I read at least one of these for the Historathon, or at least the first half. Uh, I had read Alex and Eliza by Melissa De La Cruz for book club uh, several years ago, and always wanted to kind of get back to the rest of the trilogy. So uh, I have finished the other two now. One of them is called Love and War, and then the, I think that's the second one, and then the third one is All for One. And in that third book, I thought that the author did a really good job of depicting what we know historically to be true and just putting a, um, I don't want to say she put a positive spin on it, but as good of a one as you can, I think. I just thought she, she did that very well, how she portrayed the indiscretions of Alexander Hamilton. And um, so, uh, you know, she worked with what she had and I think she did a great job. So this is a, uh, a good historical trilogy about Alexander Hamilton and Eliza. And then a dystopian trilogy that I read, uh, The Testing by Joel Charbonneau. I had read the first one several years ago. It was a Sunshine State book. These are probably more considered YA, but the first book was on the 6th to 8th grade Sunshine State list at one point. So um, I always wanted to read the other two. Katie also wants to read these. In fact, since I have gotten these, she did pick one up and uh, and started reading it and then got sidetracked and, and never went back to it. But uh, anyway, this is a, uh, a pretty decent dystopian trilogy. The second one is Independent Study, and the third one is Graduation Day. I would say if you enjoy books like The Hunger Games and Divergent, then this would be a trilogy that you might want to take a look at. And then the one that I am working on right now is the Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim trilogy. Uh, I think it was Jen from Remembered Reads heard me talking about one of these books. She said, I didn't know there were more books. It's because uh, later after uh, Robert C. O'Brien passed away, I guess, his daughter, Jane Leslie Conley, 
picked up the torch and wrote two more books. So I read the second one already. It's called Raxo and the Rats of Nim. And then this one is called R.T. Margaret and the Rats of Nim. And I have started this barely. I think I'm only in chapter two. I was not disappointed in the second book. I thought it was, uh, it was pretty good. You know, you never know what to expect when a different person picks up and continues with the series, but I thought she did the series justice, and uh, or she did the first book justice, and um, I am excited to go on and read this third book. So that's as far as I've gotten in what I have finished so far. Uh, probably this month, because this is a trilogy I can get on audio. I'm pretty sure these are on Hoopla. They were on Audible Escape, but because they're on Hoopla, I didn't rush to finish them when Audible Escape went away. This is the um, Jenny Han trilogy to all the boys I've loved before, which of course I've read the first one. I've listened to it on audio. And then I think this is book two, P.S. I Still Love You. It may be book three. I don't know. I just grabbed one of them from the library shelf and uh, I probably will go ahead and listen to both of these this month, but I have several books right now checked out on Hoopla that I need to get to before they expire, and uh, then I will get to these later on near the end of the month. Then I don't have anything in particular picked out for August and September. I have four series that um, I could read at any time, but I do have two series definitely picked out for October and one for November. So I'll just slot in the other series wherever they fit. Uh, for October, I have two different trilogies by Neil Shusterman because um, this just seemed the, the appropriate time to uh, to do a binge read of Neil Shusterman. So a, a book that I read for, um, well, it was on the Sunshine State list several years ago, was Tesla's Attic. This is one of his um, lesser-known trilogies or series. I don't hear really much about this at all, and I loved Tesla's Attic. It really went a direction that I have never seen in any other book, and I uh, thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, creepy, but fun. <laughs> and I'm really excited to read Edison's Alley and Tesla's... Te not... Uh, no... Um, Tesla's Attic is the first one. Hawking's Hallway. That's the third book. And then Scythe. I really want to read the rest of the Ark of the Scythe. I have read Scythe uh, a couple of years ago when my husband read it. We both enjoyed it. So book two is Thunderhead and book three is The Toll. I bought them on Audible with my Audible credits before I um, ended my subscription. Then, of course, no sooner had I done that than our library bought them on audio. <laughs> but it's okay. I'm glad I got them on my phone and uh, I'm excited to get to them. So these two series trilogies are set for October. And then I did a little drawing to see which one I would read in June and I didn't get to it. And then I heard that the Bookish Bryants and a few other booktubers are going to be hosting a science fiction readathon in November. So I decided to save the randoms until November. This is a really fun science fiction adventure story. I have have read randoms it's by david lease or Liss. i don't know how you say his name and the other two books are rebels and renegades and i want to read both of those in the month of november and then the other four trilogies i have uh, i do have visuals of all of them and i don't know when i will fit these in it's highly likely that one or two of these will fall by the wayside and i won't get them done this year I really want to try to get to this graphic novel series. It is the graphic novel versions of The Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan because I've read this first one and if the gals who did the um, Fall Into Reading Challenge do that challenge again in the fall, one of the prompts last year was graphic novel. So if they have that again, then that will be my excuse to get at least one of these read. I have read this first one, but um, there's two more because it's a trilogy. And so then another one I have, this one I accidentally left out of my original video when I announced this challenge. This is The Neptune Project by Polly Holyoke. And I read this first book for, um, because it was a Sunshine State book. And there are two more. One of them is The Neptune Challenge and The Neptune something else. I'm not even sure what order they go in. But this is the one I've read. This is the first one. Um, it was just a, an underwater adventure, which kind of gives me the willies because I don't like to be in the water and for these kids to be 
swimming underwater long distances and being able to breathe and survive is, is, you know, that's a fantasy in and of itself. So, uh, very interesting. And speaking of fantasies, I have this urban fantasy trilogy. I have read The Eighth Day. Again, this was a Sunshine State book. That is how I end up finding out about all these really cool middle grade books. So much of the time, it's because I read the first one. It was a Sunshine State book, and then there turns out to be more in the series. And, of course, I want to keep reading. So I read The Eighth Day, and that is exactly what it says. It, this boy f wakes up to find that he's in an eighth day. It's between, it's either between Thursday and Friday or Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday and only a few people can experience the eighth day and this book in this series also has ties to Arthurian legends so um, if that sounds interesting to you you might want to pick this up as well it's by Diane K. Salerni and I have a copy of book two the Inquisitors I think the third book is called Morgan's Curse I don't have it uh, and then the last one I have read again because it was a Sunshine State book the Sunshine State book uh, the first one in the trilogy is the Shadows of Sherwood this is a Robin Hood retelling and it is by Kekla Magoon. And the series is called Robin Hoodlum Adventure. The Robin Hoodlum Adventures or whatever. And uh, this is the second one. I found this at a book sale not too long ago. Rebellion of Thieves. I can't remember what the third one is called. Um, but anyway, I've got this one now. And I'm excited to have it. So at some point, I want to finish this trilogy as well. So those are my 12 middle grade or YA trilogies that I want to finish this year. Whether I get to all of them or not uh, is another story, but uh, so far I'm really happy with the progress that I have made, and uh, I just got to step it up just a little bit and uh, try to get all of these in, and if I don't, it's not the end of the world, it'll be fine, and uh, I, won't, I won't beat myself up too much if I don't get them all done, but... Uh, at some point, I do hope to finish these. So that is it for this video. That is my mid-year update uh, for all of my reading projects. And uh, I have finished my Goodreads goal. I usually set it at 150. And at the end of June, I think I said I was at 183, something like that. And so it, it helps that... <laughs> I Well, I didn't set out to do a book a day for the whole year. But I did do two different book a day in May projects. One of them was... With with my daughter Emily and we read a Dr. Seuss book every day. Actually we read a total of I think 34 Dr. Seuss books. So I counted all of those on my Goodreads. So that bumped up my total so that now I am still on track for a book a day uh, for the whole year again. But I'm not I'm not trying to do that. Um, if, if I hit it, fine. If I don't, uh, it'll be fine anyway. And uh, I'll just be happy with whatever I get read. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.